the Salt Lake Valley Chevrolet dealers proudly present the embraceable you. A look at the University of Utah's 1979 football season. team that never said die, never quit. A team that despite crippling early season and season-long injuries, played for the Western Athletic Conference Championship in the final game of the year. That game against 10th ranked Brigham Young University was Utah's 12th game in 12 weeks. To be even playing for a championship that late in the season is a tribute to Coach Howard, his staff, and the entire team. greatest boosters youth football has had the last two years has been the six Salt Lake Valley Chevrolet dealers. Besides donating cars to the coaches and other members of the athletic department, the Salt Lake Valley Chevrolet dealers have donated scholarship money, purchased tickets to give to their customers. And on Chevy night against Wyoming, the six local Chevy dealers bought thousands of pom-poms to give to youth football fans. Athletic Director Arnie Ferret sums up the feelings of the entire athletic department. The Salt Lake Valley Chevrolet dealers provide us with perhaps the best support of any intercollegiate athletic program in the United States. This past year when Wayne Duke, Commissioner of the Big Ten, was here, I explained the comprehensiveness of this plan and he was surprised and indicated that no one in the Big Ten had the help that the Salt Lake Valley Chevrolet dealers provide us. $24,000 in scholarship funds, which is applied to all of the programs, football, basketball, and non-revenue sports, men's and women's. Salt Lake Chevrolet dealers provide 18 cars for the coaches and staff. They buy tickets to distribute throughout the community. In one particular game, they provided over 20,000 pom-poms. Coach Howard indicated what an emotional impact this had on our crowd. There have been many schools that have asked about the Salt Lake Valley Chevrolet Dealers Program. They don't seem to be able to get the type of community support uh, that we have from these people here in Salt Lake. It is unique that six competitors can band together in the support of a state institution in their city. We want to thank them for making our program grow and be better. The University of Utah is located in Salt Lake City and is surrounded by Mother Nature at her best. Close by, you can run a river. hike, or backpack, or just relax and enjoy nature the way it was meant to be. Salt Lake and Utah offer many things. A modern, bustling city, quiet serenity in the mountains, and the oldest state university west of the Missouri River, the University of Utah. The U of U offers 22,000 students their choice of 16 different colleges. It offers degrees in everything from ballet to medicine, from physical education to law. 
and it offers something else, a great overall education on a friendly, low-key, and beautiful campus. And smack dab in the middle of it is Rice Stadium, the astroturfed home of the Utes. This year's youth football team finished 5-2 and two in the WAC, and they avenged both of the 1978 league losses by beating New Mexico and Wyoming. At Rice Stadium, the Utes averaged 25,963 fans a game, and on the road, they were an unbelievable draw. 85,783 in Tennessee, 49,416 in Washington, and they were a part of the biggest crowd ever to witness any sporting event in the state of Utah when over 40,000 people jammed into BYU's 28,000-seat stadium. Week in, week out, the Utes put on a show, both home and away. 1979 was the year of the run. Running backs Tony Lindsay, Lewis Walker, Dell Popcorn Rogers, Rob Richardson, Sammy Baldwin, and quarterback Floyd Hodge ran the opponents into the ground. These running backs ran for daylight, both day and night. Junior Tony Lindsay became the University of Utah's all-time rushing leader with 2,086 yards. And Tony has another full season to pad his credentials. The most consistent running back in Ute football history, Tony Lindsay. You're the top. Number 11, Senior Lewis Walker is another Utah record-breaking running back. In 79, Lewis set a rushing record that will be truly hard for someone to make a run for. Walker's 7.7 yards per rush average crushed the old school mark. He also returned punts and had a 22.4 yard average on kickoff returns. He's the only running back not coming back, and he will be missed. Dell Popcorn Rogers led the team in scoring with 11 touchdowns, including a 60-yarder in the opener against Long Beach State. Only a sophomore, Dell is expected to add a lot of excitement for youth fans the next two seasons. When quarterback Floyd Hodge got the starting nod in the season's fifth game, he was ready. Hodge was ready to run, to pass, to be a leader. After that game, Floyd started every other one. And when he suffered a knee injury in the BYU game, the Utah offense lost its leader. A runner can't run, or a passer can't pass, without the guys up front opening the holes, or giving the quarterback time to throw. Although all of the first four offensive tackles were lost for the year, this year's offensive line did yeoman duty. They performed above and beyond all expectations. They all share the honor of being a part of the greatest rushing team in University of Utah history. They have a lot to be proud of. All the excitement on the 79 Utes was not all on offense. The defense deserves a bow. Starting with number one, Jeff Griffin. Last 
season, he tied an NCAA record by returning three interceptions for touchdowns. His five interceptions this year puts Jeff just three behind the all-time Utah record. And there's not a better hitter, a better tackler on the team. Probably the biggest surprise on defense was number 60, middle linebacker Bill Goff. He hustled, he hit, and he intercepted six passes. An incredible performance by a sophomore who saw limited action in 78. The defensive unit as a whole intercepted 22 passes and recovered 13 fumbles. They played hurt, they played hard, and most of them will be back to play again. Utah style is a happening from the fans who keep turning the turnstiles to the Utah marching band and Utahns. Football is fun. And don't forget the players. They probably have more fun than anybody. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. The sun is shining, come on, get happy. The Lord is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're going to the promised land. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. Sun is shining, come on, get happy. Lord is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Happy, you better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy, get ready. Coach Wayne Howard just finished his third year at Utah. He's honest, dynamic, and a great handler of men. During the 35 to nothing win over UTEP, Howard coached with his usual enthusiasm. All right, Dale, all right. All right. All right. Way to run, Dale, all right. Way to run. He got it. All right. Hey, get a run in fast. The second half has got to be a lot harder. We can't have the penalties offensively. Defensively, we got to tackle better. You got to beat the crab black on there, your defensive ends. We got to do the option better. We got to think about the pass. Stay back. Stay on the outside corners when the option's coming toward you. Just think and fight and go hard. Now, the first half doesn't count in any ball game. It doesn't count at all. We're going out in about two or three minutes. It is a zero to zero game. You got to feel more about it now in the first half. The second half counts. Every guy now. We're going about two minutes. Get this in for sure. This has got to get in. Good job. All right.
The Salt Lake Valley Chevrolet dealers are proud of their association with Utah's football fever and with Wayne Howard. To Coach Howard, the feeling is mutual. Well, the Salt Lake Valley Chevrolet dealers have helped us in uh, so many ways that it would take me uh, a long time to, uh, to go over them all, but I think the ones that stand out the most to me are the pom-poms that they used at the Wyoming game. I know that when the team came out, all the coaches and, and uh, the players uh, all saw the, the mass of red and white and uh, could see that the people were really behind them, and I think that gave them some inspiration to play and, and uh, a great feeling that there were people in the stands and Chevrolet dealers that were behind them and were really for the program. Well, I don't know of any schools that get the same type of support that we get from the Salt Lake Chevrolet dealers. Uh, uh, of course, I haven't been around the country, but, but I don't know how you could give more support, not just financial, but a lot of moral support, a lot of help in the little things that uh, help make a program go. Nineteen seventy nine was a season of highs and lows, of personal records and heartbreaks. It was a season of twelve games in twelve weeks, of playing nationally ranked Tennessee, Washington, and Brigham Young, all on the road. It was a season of personal triumphs and tragedies. It was a near championship season, but also disappointing to the players because a near miss doesn't count. Next season, 42 players who have started at least one game for the Utes will be back. 42 players who have the experience, know-how, and dedication to make the University of Utah a football team that teams like Nebraska will have to worry about in 1980. The Salt Lake Valley Chevrolet dealers have been proud to be associated with Coach Wayne Howard, his staff, and every member of this year's team. We thank them for making Saturdays in the fall something very special. <laughs>